Hey folks, Steve Urban here from Recruiting Firm RiderFlex. Six tips for you on recruiter relationships. Now, I've talked about this before in various ways many times on the show, but as of April 21st, 2024, here are six fresh updated tips for managing the relationships you have with recruiters. That goes for recruiters internally at a company that are employees and or recruiters that work for an agency like ours here at RiderFlex. Either way, number one, and probably the most important, okay, is this. Time, okay? The time that you invested in a recruiter, don't just throw it away. Now, let me be real specific here. From the moment you send an email, an email exchange back and forth to a recruiter, okay? There's several minutes you just invested. Maybe you have two or three emails back and forth. Okay? Maybe you had to update your resume a certain way or they wanted to see a certain document. Now you're into it for 15, 20, 30 minutes. Now you have a phone call with that recruiter. Now you're into it for another 30 minutes. Now you got an hour, hour and a half invested. Okay, then you send a thank you note, whatever. Let's say you've invested an hour and a half with this new relationship with a recruiter. Let's just stop right there. Let's say that's all that, that happens. And then you don't get the job. Okay, why then would you be an asshole to the recruiter or fail to log their contact information or fail to send them a LinkedIn connection request to try to stay in contact with them? Why would you do anything to flush that new relationship and contact down the toilet? Okay, never do that. Every single time you connect with the recruiter, it's a chance for you to build a new relationship that can help you down the road, which I will go into, okay, with these other tips. So never be rude to the recruiter, never be an asshole, always communicate properly, always connect with them on LinkedIn, log their contact information in your phone or in your contacts, whatever program you use, et cetera. It's a new relationship that you can find valuable. Don't throw away precious minutes. Your time is the most important thing you have really besides your health. Don't take the time that you put into a new relationship and flush it down the toilet and never do anything with it. That's my number one tip. Okay, number two, if you communicate poorly or behave poorly, or you're an asshole or you're a jerk or whatever to a recruiter, it is documented in their applicant tracking system, the software that they use to process candidates. Every recruiter on the planet uses some sort of software to process and document candidates flowing through the system. What they say, how they email, all your emails, all your text messages, your phone calls, your resume, anything you do is documented in the applicant tracking system. If you're an asshole at any point, it lives in the applicant tracking system, lives in their software forever. Okay, And they'll put a little star next to your name. Asshole, never hire, do not call. Don't let that happen to you. If you don't get the job or whatever, never be an asshole to the recruiter. By the way, I suggest never being an asshole to the recruiter, even if they were an asshole to you. I know it's hard to do, but you never want to be flagged in an applicant tracking system by any recruiter that you're an asshole because your resume will be bypassed forever. That was number two. Number three, from that applicant tracking system where they're making these notes about you, often recruiters will share that information with each other from one agency to another or from the agency to the company, et cetera. If you were an asshole to me, for example, and I'm hiring for ABC company, when I talk to the internal recruiter at ABC company, I'm going to tell her you were an asshole. <laughs> okay. Number four. Don't forget, recruiters can make introductions for you, all kinds of introductions to other recruiters that might be hiring, other companies that might be hiring, people you're trying to get a hold of. Let's say you're friends with me, okay? I'm your new recruiter friend. Friend, We've built a relationship. Six months later, you're trying to apply for a job. 
you're trying to get a meeting with Mary. Mary won't respond to you. You notice that I'm connected to Mary on LinkedIn and that Mary and I are friends. You call me. Hey, Steve, can you get me an introduction to Mary? Sure, Johnny, I'm happy to help because we're friends. If you were an asshole to me, I won't do that. Okay. Introductions. Recruiters can make introductions. That was number four. Number five, just because you don't get the job you applied for or the original job you were talking to the recruiter about doesn't mean there won't be other jobs down the road that the recruiter might find a match for. It's a relationship that you've invested time on that could pay dividends for other jobs. Don't forget that. Okay. And number six, this may sound small. My last point, it may sound small, but really it's a key one. When you're working with a recruiter, if you've built a relationship with them, if there's a mistake on your resume or your LinkedIn profile, or they think you should do something different with it, often they will tell you. Guess what? Nobody else will. <laughs> okay. Most of your friends and family are not going to tell you. The employer you're trying to talk to, uh, to get a job with, that hiring manager, they're not going to tell you if there's a mistake, but a recruiter that you've built a relationship with will tell you, okay? It's very handy, can come in very handy sometimes. And there is my updated Rider Flex tip of the day as it relates to recruiter relationships. Oh.